Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna get pure, pure RODI water. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And before you all jump and start asking, yes, I do have a bunch of fish in the tank now. Yes, I will cover that in a video very soon. No, we will not cover it in this video. These guys have literally just gone in the tank yesterday. I wanna give them a few more days to settle in before I uh, release the video on it, just to uh, make sure I can get you guys some really nice uh, images and video of them in their tank. I just wanna let them settle in. But uh, like I said, we're not gonna talk about the fish in this episode. We're gonna talk about this box that just arrived in the mail for me. And this uh, unit here is uh, my brand new RODI system. And I figured what a great opportunity to explain what an RODI system is, talk about why we need them, talk about how they do what they do, and then go about unboxing and setting this one up. But um, now that I've said that, I figured probably the first step is to unbox this so I can then talk you through what it is, why you need to use it, and where I recommend to get your RODI unit from. So let me get a knife, I'll open this box up, and we'll get stuck into it. All right, so full disclosure, I ordered this unit from Reef Pure RO Systems here in Australia, and uh, there's a few reasons why I like to shop with these guys, and that's mainly because they're absolute experts in the field. They don't just send you the highest spec unit that they can sell you. They actually go to the trouble of asking what your postcode is. They then look up the town water report for your area, see what's in your town water, and then recommend a system based on your needs. And uh, ironically for me, that was actually their lowest spec unit. My town water was really high quality in water, which confirmed what I discovered over the last eight or nine years of reefing, that uh, my pre-filters and my membranes actually last a long time. So I was under the impression that my uh, town water was quite good, but it was really nice to get confirmation from a uh, a professional to say, yeah, your water's great. You don't need to buy our uh, top of the line unit. You can grab our uh, essential system here and uh, be off and running. So get that box out of the way. Let's just pop open this bag so we can see what we're working with. Alrighty, looks like we've got uh, everything here that we need. And uh, I guess I'll start off with the actual unit itself. Now, um, if you're new to the reefing game or uh, you've just always purchased RODI, you're probably wondering what exactly it is. You know everyone talks about how you have to have it and um, I guess we'll go back a step and talk about just how uh, reef tanks work. As you may know from any sort of fish keeping um, background you've had or uh, even if you just left a cup of water out for a while, you'll notice that that water slowly evaporates. Now, in a marine reef tank, we don't just have water in that tank, we have all sorts of other elements including salt. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that it is only the water that evaporates. So we've got salt and water in this tank. The water evaporates, leaving the water in here to get saltier and saltier and saltier. Therefore, when we top that level back up, we need to use pure RO water, which is just fresh water that's had all contaminants removed from it. Now, that's very important to make sure that we're not introducing any pollutants to the tank. Or if, even if you're not using a natural salt water, if you're using an artificial salt water, you wanna make sure you've got a perfectly pure fresh water to then add your salt mix to. Otherwise you're dealing with pollutants before you even begin. And you know how much trouble that can cause you with algae and things down the line. So that's why we need an RO unit. What is an RO unit? What does RO stand for? What does it do? How does it work? All right, well, I guess we'll start off with RO is reverse osmosis. Now. That's what this little bad boy here is. This is the RO membrane. That sits in this tube up the top here. If you remember back to your high school days, reverse osmosis is where uh, water actually is pushed back through a membrane. And in process of doing that, it actually removes all sorts of uh, contaminants. Uh, it, basically, it's a real hectic form of filtration. Now, whilst these RO membranes are really, really efficient at pulling out uh, all sorts of contaminants, they're also probably the most complex and expensive part of the system. So we have a few other elements packaged around the RO membrane to make this last as long as possible. First and foremost, we start off with here, and you can see on the uh, Reef Pure RO system, they've actually got them well labeled. We start off here with a sediment filter, and I'll see if I can open this up. All right, I'll use the included filter. Spanner. All right. All right, the first filter, the sediment filter, is literally like 
it's like a sock, like a dense sock. And the purpose of this one here is to remove any solids, any sort of uh, bits chipped away from uh, the piping and the in the town water supply up to your house, any other solids, any dirt, anything like that. We want this section to remove that out. This is the the pre pre filter. This pulls out any of the real low hanging fruit stuff that we don't want to go through into the next system. So uh, I'm going to sit the pre filter back in there. All right, <laughs> bear with me while I uh, use the included filter wrench. So we've gone through our sediment filter, we've pulled out all solids from the water. Next we come into our carbon block. Now just like you've probably seen on uh, your Brita water filters or anything, and even if you've seen, uh, I don't know, Bear grills or something out there, they will filter water with carbon and that's what this block here is. Take that one off, sit that down without dinting my new table. This block here contains carbon and that basically removes uh, it removes some chlorines, chloramines, um, some other uh, organics and things like that. Basically, you pull out uh, your physical sediment in the water, then you come through here, you pull out things that aren't a, a physical, but they're a contaminants in the water. That then gets our water to a state where we're good to then pass it through our RO membrane, which does 95% of the work. We wanna protect this, make it last as long as possible. And then, just because you may have heard of the term, RO and RODI. DI literally adds a resin that you put into the final chamber of your uh, RO system to make it RODI. And this is basically just a safety net. What the resin does is it pulls out anything else um, that makes its way through the reverse osmosis membrane, which again is all about making our membrane last a little bit longer. So we have two filtration stages pre the RO membrane. And then we have another one here that just so if our membrane starts leaking one TDS, which is a total dissolved solids, I believe, I'll double check that and put the uh, text down below. That's how we measure how clean the water is in and out of our RO system. And uh, once our membrane starts leaking out one or two TDS, normally that would be the point where you would need to then change the RO membrane. We can run some DI resin, which will then pull those last couple of TDS out to make our membrane last a little bit longer again. And um, the resins have come a long way of late. This one here you can see is a uh, color indicating resin. So this will tell you when it's exhausted and you can basically get away with just changing your pre-filters and your DI resin, depending on your town water. Maybe you might only get one month out of it if you've got really, really bad water. Or if like me, you can go 12, 18 months before changing your pre-filters and your DI resin. And if you can keep that maintenance up, you're gonna keep your membrane alive much, much longer. Now, like I said, you can get all sorts of different units. And thankfully for me, my town water, as assessed by the Reef Pure guys, is very high quality. So they said that I will get away with just the two pre-filters, the uh, standard membrane here, you can get different flow rate membranes, and a single DI chamber. Of course, you can bolster that with multiple stages of pre-filtration. You can run multiple uh, RO membranes. You can also run multiple DI resin chambers. If your water supply is a little bit low in pressure, you can add booster pumps. You can do all sorts of things if you really wanna get hectic on your RO DI. Uh, manufacturing for me, with this system set up to automatically turn on and off, and it doesn't have to do it in any sort of hurry with the high quality RO, uh, sorry, the high quality town water supply that I have at this house, I was able to get away with this very affordable base system. And I'll put some links down below in the description for you guys if you want to check out the full range from Reef Pure RO. But first and foremost, I think I might put this unit together now um, and then I'll take you out to where my current RO system is sitting, which is a number of years old and was at the stage of having to replace all the pre-filters and the RO membrane. Hence why I decided I'll just go for a brand new system and make sure I've got all the best quality equipment for my uh, dream reef tank. I'm gonna get to work putting this unit together. Um, the two pre-filters are already in there. I've got to put the membrane in. I've got to put the DI resin in, hook up some of the included um, RO tubing. I won't need the uh, drain adapter and I won't need the uh, tap adapter because I've already got uh, John Guest hosing coming to and from my uh, current RO system. So they'll just go into my spares cupboard, but uh, let's get to work. If this is your first RODI system, fear not. The guys at Reef Pure RO Systems have an extensive range of uh, instructions and even videos to show you how each and every component goes together and works. So don't be afraid to jump on their site and check it out or simply follow the QR codes on each of their products. 
All yeah. right, I've got my uh, unit configured now and there's just three connections I've got to make to it out where my ROD, R-O-D-I, well, it becomes a mouthful quickly, unit sits. I have a uh, water in coming into the sediment filter. Ironically, I have a waste water coming out of the back of the membrane because that actually purges off the dirty water with, sorry, the, the items out of the uh, RO membrane with some water just to flush that away. And then obviously I have my clean and pure RODI coming out of the DI resin chamber. So I'm gonna take you outside. I've turned off the uh, main water supply to my current RODI filter. I've grabbed the Dyson and cleaned a little bit of the, uh, little bit of the uh, DI resin that I spilt. I should also point out that the uh, 540 gram pack of DI resin that comes with this kit is enough to fill that chamber. And I mean, whilst I spilt like maybe a couple of grams, I still use the entire packet. You need to compact that DI resin in because you don't want the water to channel its way through it. You want it to have to be forced through that DI resin. So really make sure you give that, uh, that chamber a good tap. Make sure you get any air pockets out and compact it right in. Other than that, if you make sure you follow the instructions included with the Reef Pure, Reef Pure RO system kit, you will get it uh, put together, no trouble at all. And you'll be at the stage where I am now where we can go install it. So uh, let's go get into it. All right, here we are in my outdoor uh, enclosure for both my dog and some of my um, aquarium equipment. You can see I've got uh, my UV down there. I've got my chiller, but tucked away in the corner here, I've also got my current RODI unit. So I'm just gonna lift him. I don't have it secured in there any sort of particular way. I'm just gonna lift that out. We've got uh, the, Water supply there, can I undo that first? There could be some pressure in there, hopefully not. There goes my existing DI. We're all good, no pressure there, happy days. Gonna undo my water out and waste water. Hopefully no. All right, you can see that is my uh, existing RO unit now. Whilst it was started to read a couple of PDS, um, even after the DI uh, resin, I realistically probably could have just changed out the pre-filters, the membrane of the DI resin, but I figured that uh, I've had this unit now running for uh, about seven, eight years, and uh, it sat dry for six months, which is never good for a uh, RO membrane. So um, like I said, I was gonna have to replace all of the components anyway. And by the time I purchased each of those, it really wasn't that much more expensive to get a brand new unit. So this can become a spare. I can keep this one out in the shed should someone need to loan one or if I need to produce some RO in a hurry or something like that, if the quality is not absolutely critically important. But uh, for day-to-day -day use, I want uh, my dream reef tank to have the absolute nicest RO water available to it. So out with the old, in with the new. One more thing I should point out, I run the Auto Aqua uh, Twin sensor for um, keeping an eye on the TDS of my units. With the twin sensor, you have the ability to check the incoming water and the outgoing water. But realistically, where I like to check it is from uh, before, sorry, after the RO membrane and then after the DI. So I can see just what sort of quality of water there is there. I'm not too fussed if the uh, water from my town supply goes up or down. Main thing is I wanna see how hard my membrane's working and then what quality of water is going into my tank. So I'll put this on the new unit to make sure I can keep an eye on those parameters. I should also point out that from uh, the Reef Pure RO guys, you can actually buy these uh, pre-installed with their own dual TDS meters. But uh, as I already had the Auto Aqua one, again, they didn't try to upsell me. They just said you can reuse that. So happy days. All right, I got my unit all hooked up now. What I've done is I've uh, not let the outlet go back into my RODI reservoir. I've got the outlet going over this way and out to the drain because what I want to do is just flush the system until I see the TDS drop down to zero or at least one. But uh, being a brand new system, I'd expect at least zero. So we want to give it a good flush, make sure we get all that initial uh, manufacturing and just uh, <laughs> any of the sort of contaminants out of the system so we know we're getting that pure reef RO. I'll go turn the water on. We'll get this unit happening, make sure there's no leaks. All right, I've just brought you in as close as I can because I've got the uh, water onto the unit now. Sounds like there's leaks, but I don't believe there are. I believe it's just purging all the air out of the system. Keeping an eye on the TDS. Just about to start getting some water coming out the outlet. I'll bring it over here so you can see. Yeah, still not quite filling up the line. It's still purging the air out, but uh, 
I can hear water coming out of the outlet. And I can just make sure that uh, outlet doesn't go there. At the moment, we're at 12 TDS or 12 ppm on the TDS prior to the membrane and at uh, 7 TDS or ppm of TDS after the membrane. So we'll wait till we see some solid water coming out of here or steady water, I should say, hopefully no solids. And uh, then we can keep an eye on it from there. But I'll also watch the unit and make sure there's no leaks and uh, should be all good. Just wanted to go handheld for a second so you can see the water actually going into the uh, DI chamber here. And that's why we're still not getting anything in the outlet yet because it is still purging through the system. So the fact that we're seeing a bit of water running through there tells me that we've gone through the uh, pre-filter here. We've gone through the carbon block. We've come up and we've started to go through the membrane. I could hear the wastewater from the membrane coming out and going to the drain. And uh, the fact that we're starting to fill up our DI chamber is a great sign. And uh, when we look over here, go back to TDS1, still showing 9 ppm before the membrane, even up to 10, we're showing zero after the membrane. So we are starting to get some output water now. I'll let that run, I'll let it go into my lawn. I'll let that run for a uh, good 10, 15 minutes and uh, we'll see how the uh, TDS shows up then. But you can see we've actually got zero coming out of the um, DI resin now, which is great. So realistically, this water would be good to go into the tank. But uh, the fact that we've still got a little bit pre uh, membrane suggests that I'll just let it flush a little bit further yet. Although that just took a huge drop then. We'll give it a bit longer and then uh, I'll consider it flushed and uh, we can put it back onto the automated system. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap the video up there because I've got my Reef Pure RO system installed, running, producing zero TDS, happy days. But of course, if you have any questions at all, either for myself or for the Reef Pure RO system, guys, pop it in the comment section down below. If you don't know, I personally reply to each and every question. So if you have any questions, feedbacks, comments, whatever it may be, that is the best place to get hold of me. And um, at this point, I want to give a huge shout out to Reef Pure RO Systems. No, they didn't give me the unit. I, don't know, I bought it, but um, just I really like to recognize when Australian guys are doing really good stuff in this hobby. And um, the, the elevation that they've brought in RO Systems to our hobby is just second to none. The fact that they go above and beyond with every install to make sure that you were getting the perfect system for your needs is just something that I want to get behind. So if you're in the market for a new RO system, be sure to check out reefpureRO.com.au. Not to mention they've got a whole range of other accessories as well, including um, CO2 media scrubbers and some other filter media holders and reactors and whatnot check out their website. I don't have any discount codes or anything like that, but um, I really appreciate it if you got behind these guys and supported them. So um, other than that, I think I'll wrap the video up. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, if you want to see more, including the video I do on my brand new fish in my dream reef tank, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on anything in any upcoming videos. Till next time though, you guys, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.